Okay guys, so here's the, uh, the Sidereal Astrology Report the week ahead for April 15th through the 21st. So as promised, I'm going to deliver these every week as, as, as much as I can. <coughs> um, just so we can stay ahead of the game and ride these cosmic waves, you know, these cosmic influences as they, as they pass on. Um, because yeah, this is, um, like I said, this is the whole uh, um, Pluto... <coughs> conjunct Saturn, conjunct South Node situation. So there's big, big changes, big breakdowns, big rebuilding. Um, so this is a quiet week. And then just so for those of you who don't, who don't know, uh, and those of you who've been watching my videos, you know this is sidereal astrology. Sidereal astrology aligns accurately with the constellations in the sky. It's the merging of astronomy and astrology. Practice like the ancients, where we would map the sky you know the sky chart and the and the, and the astrology chart are both the same um like i like i mentioned in some of my videos that you know uh, uh, tropical astrology is not aligned with the constellations in the sky so that's important for you, for, for you to know especially when you're following a lot of these uh, tropical astrologers telling you that the full moon is an xyz constellation and it's just not you know if you look up in the sky you know your constellations it's it's not there and that's really important. I believe it's really important. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, like I said, we're going to move forward. But we do have a full moon on April 19th. So, I actually combine the week ahead with the full moon. So, right after this, because this is going to be a really short week, I'm going to go into the full moon report. But if you haven't already, um, you know, go to the website, sidereoastrologist.com, and sign up for the email list so you can get all of our email newsletters. And... Um, <clears throat> You know, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, click subscribe, uh, click the notification bell so you see when I put out new videos. Uh, and then we have a Facebook group called Sidereo Revolution. So join that, and we share a lot of wisdom on that, a lot of cosmic star uh, wisdom on that on that uh, group. So um, <clears throat> yeah, you should join that. Um, okay, so if you, <clears throat> if you watched the last video. We went over what was going on. So basically, uh, the, the first week after Mercury retrograde was the new moon, like right after new moon where Mercury went out of retrograde. Then Mercury went right into conjunct with Neptune. So a lot of us were receiving these kind of intuitive nudges. I call them like uh, universal nudges or these spiritual messages. So that was really strong <clears throat> right after Mercury retrograde, new moon, when it came out. Uh, so a lot of us got all this like spiritual inspiration for what? You know what lies ahead, <clears throat> and then in the in the last video we saw there were some transits with Saturn, but a lot a lot of stuff with Venus, um, Pluto. Um, so all of that stuff is now ending, as you can see here. I'll point this stuff out. So you see the Sun, Sun trine, Nept, uh, Jupiter is ending today on the fifteenth. The Venus square Jupiter, which is in the galactic center, and it's retrograde, by the way. So um, in Sagittarius, yeah. So that's that's ending and um, uh, ending on the 16th so it's going exact on the 15th so that's what we talked about in the last video where, where, where Venus is actually gonna drink the first uh, taste of the elixir that Jupiter is mixing up because while uh, Saturn and Pluto conjunct south node is all happening you know that whole two-year process Jupiter is holding down the fort in the galactic center mixing that elixir that great elixir of change of expansiveness you know so that's like that's the whole story that's going on, which is why we're doing these weekly transits. Yeah, so that ends. Um, that Venus Pluto sextile ends. So that whole shock the energy, that whole like um, transmutation of feminine divine shock the sexual energy, that's ending on the fifteenth. So this whole week, <clears throat> but then um, then we have that Pluto uh, conjunct South Node that's ending on the sixteenth. So a lot of that energy that built up since that new moon now is just like kind of like coming to a close. So we might have more kind of, you know, reflection now, which is good for the full moon because that's that's what you want to do on the full moon. You want to have a culmination of all this energy and then you want to reflect upon it <clears throat> during the full moon. Um, so I think I think it's all kind of like this is the wave, right? So now... Um, I don't read any of Galactic Center unless it's in the Galactic Center. So Sun, Trine, Galactic Center. V. I don't read any of that. <clears throat> but what's really interesting is right here. April 19th, which is when we're going to have that full moon. You have uh, Mercury and Chiron. Mercury conjunct Chiron. 
uh, and it's in Pisces, right? I'm going to pull this chart up. Yeah, so you see Mercury conjunct Chiron in Pisces. Um, Venus is also in Pisces. Okay, um, here's Jupiter, the galactic center. Pluto Saturn conjunction, <clears throat> that whole thing that's going on. Um, all right, and then um, we'll move over to the full moon in a minute, but <clears throat> just so we can see this here, uh, Neptune, yeah, I mean, uh, Mercury conjunct Chiron. So this is like uh, the, 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 the healing is going to be now expressed. The healing or or the wounds that are still exposed, the possible might be still expressed. And it has to do, because based on the new, the full moon report, <clears throat> it has to do with the feminine. So the feminine, when we were dealing with that drinking of the elixir with the Jupiter square uh, Venus, now there's going to be, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, uh, it's a taste test, right? So there's going to be a verdict of what this tastes like. Uh, and it might not, you know, it might not be the best. So there might be some expression of the feminine saying, hey, like, I, I see the change. You know, we are the change. We're doing the change. And, you know, all these great things. But it's not, it's not there. You know, there's still healing. There's still work. And that's okay because this process of the Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, and the, the galactic center is a long process. So this is just the first taste test. So there's going to be that but there needs to be open communication so I think this is what's going to happen there's going to be around the full moon the feminine is going to you know express you know what what their take on was be, you know between you know new moon and full moon and what's culminated and what they feel so it might be a good time for everyone to just listen I, I can just I can just see that um yeah so <clears throat> the next thing I want to point out which is um after the full moon and it's on the 21st. I'll point this out. Okay, right here. It's, uh, right here. Sun conjunct Uranus. And they both move into Pisces. Uh, I'm sorry, Aries. Out of Pisces into Aries. So this is change. So I'm going to show this to you. Hang on a sec. See that? Right there. So they just now ended the cycle, right? So when you when you go through Pisces, Pisces is, is the end of the zodiac cycle. So you begin a new cycle in Aries. And April 21st, Sun moves right into Aries. And remember, this is true Sidere astrology. So this is accurately aligned with the constellations in the sky. So so just know that, okay? That this Sun is in Aries now. It's not like in Aries in March. Like... All right, so you got to do your research and you and you know for yourself. But yeah, so right here, Sun Uranus is like, wow, radical change, like renewal, an amazing renewal. So that's happening April twenty first. So after all this stuff, after the full moon, after the expressions, you know, and, and, and the culmination of all the energy, then then there's like radical change, and it could be quick and fast. But if you're riding these waves. You know that's coming, so you won't be surprised. But definitely, it's happening. Okay, so we're going to move on now to the um, full moon report. Um, it's on uh, the 19th. Okay, so I'm going to close all this out. Hang on a second. Okay, so <clears throat> we have the um, full moon report up for April 19th. Uh, it looks like it's in uh, Virgo, but it, um, I was looking at my sky chart. It's like on the cusp between Virgo and Libra. I'm not sure what tropical astrology is going to say, but um, uh, yeah, so when you look on your sky maps, you might see it on the cusp between between Virgo and Libra. So it might it might read as as either Libra or Virgo, um, which is which is interesting. <clears throat> so let's see what 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 comes up. Um, anyway, um, for me, because I practice idea astrology, you know, I use the true sizes of the constellations, so you can see they're all different sizes. Um, all right, so they match astronomy. So, also, um, uh, when there's a full moon, and you can see here it's in Virgo, uh, when it's a full moon, I like to see what the sun is doing because uh, if you watch all my videos before, I explained that the sun 
uh, the the moon, full moon, reflects sunlight, or the moon in general reflects sunlight. So we, so you have to look at what the sun is doing because that's what the moon is reflecting. All right. So if we look at the sun, the sun is in Pisces, and the Pisces moving into Aries. You see, it's like two days away from Aries. It's conjunct Uranus. Uranus uh, is zero degrees Aries right now, so it's just moving in to Aries. So um, that that makeup right there spells like radical change, right? Right there, like new cycle. So that's important to to look at um, because also um, go down here we have a trying to the Jupiter retrograde in the galactic center. So that's just that's just good. That's just like that whole thing we spoke about that whole like solar power energy with this brew mix, and that was that whole thing that we spoke about earlier with Venus had the taste test. So the sun is involved now and in, in just making sure the brew is good. Uh, but then there's there's a sex there's a square with the sun on Pluto, which I'm curious to see what that's going to be like. Uh, it looks like a T square, but it's just hitting. Uh, is it hitting a node? Yeah, it looks like it's hitting the North Node, T square, Pluto. So um, that that could be kind of interesting. Um, you know, like the direction, the new change, and uh, you know transmutation. So. Uh, curious to see what that's going to be like but that's um what new full moons are all about it's um <clears throat> you know like like you saw the right after the the new moon there was there was like a lot of energy a lot of movement a lot of intuitive messages a lot of a lot of movement and then the last right leading up to this full moon is kind of quiet because everything was like coming into culmination and then you kind of reflect on the full moon reflect you know the process and the process um, is what I think is feminine. Because you have uh, Venus conjunct Mercury conjunct Chiron. So Chiron is the wounded healer, Mercury is the messenger, and Venus is the feminine. And Neptune is in the same part of the sky, but Neptune is, is not, uh, let me see, it's not even conjunct anything in that house or in that area of the sky. But it is an it is an Aquarius ruled by uh, Uranus, so it's still uh, like that whole like unknown change. And then the feminine is expressing whatever stage the feminine is in after having that sip of that elixir that we spoke about earlier, and then and then the feminine will then express, um, you know, this change. Like how how was it? You know, how, the elixir is the elixir good for the change that we're about to have? Like what needs to happen and it's going to be very expressive so so it could be a good time to listen to the feminine because she's going to express the process that happened between the, the new moon and the full moon now uh, that's that's my that's my observation is that so so listen to that um, <clears throat> so it depends how the person expresses their wounds or their healing sometimes people can complain sometimes people can be really expressive you know, crying, um, happy, uh, you know, so all that stuff is going to come up. Uh, and it's involved with radical change because it's involved with Uranus. Um, so, yeah, um, that's what's happening. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's 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 good time to reflect, I think. Um, a lot of energy, culmination happened. And then now expressing the work that happened, um, the effect, what needs to happen, what has happened, what will happen, all of those things. I think this is it. And I even labeled this one, uh, you know, I always label my, my moon reports. This one's called First Light. Um, oh, the wound still visible. That's because of the Chiron situation we just spoke about. So, yeah, so see if I'm missing anything. Yeah, that, that Sun square Pluto is interesting, so I'm curious to see what that's going to be like. Um, yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, I think this is, it. This is pretty pretty good. I mean, I think I think it's really clear what needs to happen or what will happen, and we're just going to, you know, ride it out, right? So, all right, uh, this is it for the Full Moon Report, April 19th, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.